Hi, this is Vince of VincePrep.com and Agos Consulting. Every few years, I like to look at the admissions criteria of the top schools, Harvard and Stanford, for MBA. You guys are going to be watching this or like, what about INSEAD? And I love INSEAD, actually. Um, the reason I look at Harvard is they're just more, much more transparent and Stanford trying to sort of always Stanford's always trying to sort of catch Harvard and hopefully we never will. Gosh, if Stanford ever if Stanford ever really beats Harvard, the world will will flip upside down. Harvard's great because it's the gold standard and it's always nice to have somebody to it's always nice to have something to aspire to. Um, Harvard is really transparent with their admissions uh, system because Harvard has the luxury of having a relatively stable model. They're the ones that can say, and no other schools really say this as clearly as, as HPS does, that, you know, for example, half of the people that they interviewed, they're expecting that half of those that are interviewed will be admitted. And then of those that are admitted, they're expecting nine out of 10 of those that they take will actually enroll in the school. That's a luxury. I'm sure all admissions officers wish they had a predictable model like that. That is that, and, and it's another way that HBS is the gold standard um, for all this. LBS flip side, you know, not very transparent. I love London Business School, but it's really just not as transparent with the data as Harvard Business School is. Um, and Stanford is somewhere in the middle, uh, closer to Harvard, but but um, not as transparent again because it's simply not as predictable. So we, if you guys come to me and you say, you know, Vince, what are my chances of getting into Harvard? I'm, I'm not going to answer that question explicitly. If you want to go, you guys all know about this, and I'm not going to give a plug for a competitor. He's not a competitor, whatever. He's He's an interesting guy in the space, right? You can go over to Poets and Quants and you can get Sandy, um, who I don't frankly respect that much, but I can't disrespect him either. Um, HBS guru, right, was was doing this when I got started in the industry. So he's my senior, if you will. He's an odds maker. He's a numbers guy. He'll give you your percentage and he'll sort of make you feel bad about yourself. I just don't do that because I don't believe in it. Um, I do have an, I'm more of a poet. I do have a sort of gut feeling. And frankly, I won't take a client who I don't have a gut feeling will get admitted to one of one or more of her target schools. And I'm also not one of these people who'll tell you where to apply so that I can take you. Like, okay, I'll I'll accept you as my, my, my client if you apply to Kellogg, because I think you can get into Kellogg. I just don't have time. I just don't need that anymore. I really don't need, I'm, I'm in a very lucky position. I just don't need that many clients for now. Uh, that's my current setup is that I, I'm not forced to take lots of clients and I therefore don't take lots of clients. I really love doing what I'm doing in a very non-capitalistic, uh, sorry for the hat, by the way, it's cold. I really love what I'm doing in a very unscalable, inefficient, um, you know, anti-capitalistic kind of a, uh, of an, uh, of a, just a very artist, artisanal, artistic sort of style where there's no, there's no, I don't really have a system per se. I just have a process where I get to know you and I help you figure out your story. And here's one of the things I do. The very first thing I do, and this is why I'm starting this series of videos, if you say to me, what are my chances of getting into HBS or Stanford GSB MBA program? I'll say back to you, okay, first of all, what are they looking for? And there's two places to find that, at least two places to find that data. In theory, what are they looking for? That's the admissions criteria that Harvard says they're looking for, uh, what is it, uh, analytical aptitude and appetite, uh, engaged community citizenship is off the top of my head, and habit of leadership. I think their order is slightly different, but analytical aptitude and attitude or something like that, attitude and aptitudes basically means do you have an analytical mindset? Do you like doing math? Do you like analyzing the data? Second, um, have you do you demonstrate leadership uh, regularly? Do you have a habit of leadership? Meaning you just sort of can't help but speak up. You just can't sort of can't help but 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 be influential and be involved in things around you. You're not you're just not passive by nature. You're active. Um, you have a habit of leadership. And three engaged community citizenship. Are you not only a habit of leadership? 
um, at work, outside work, also, also even more than that, are you engaged? Um, are, are you a citizen of your community as you define community? Those are Harvard's stated admissions criteria. And I would say to my client, a prospective client, do you have those three things? Show me where you demonstrate those three things um, at work and outside of work. And Stanford's are not quite as catchy. I haven't memorized them yet. But I'll be basically what I'll be doing in this series of videos is analyzing Harvard's three admissions criteria and Stanford's, I think five last time I checked, admissions criteria. And 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 then thinking about what those words mean. And on top of that, overlaying or yeah, overlaying a matrix of data. So the two places you need to be looking to figure out, are, you say to me, Vince, am I competitive? I say to you, I don't know, are you competitive? Do you have what they say they're looking for? Do you match the admissions criteria of these two MBA programs? And second, how do you compare? Uh, that's the poet side, right? Qualitative data, qualitative admissions criteria, no numbers, just words. Do you qualify for those do you, are you qualified? Do you demonstrate these? Can you demonstrate in your written application and eventually at an interview these qualities that they qualified in their admissions criteria? And quantitatively, are you competitive? Um, you know, how are your numbers? And also industry-wise, are you, are you in one of the overrepresented, uh, you know, industries or functions or regions or are you in one of the underrepresented diversity do you do you represent for the school some aspect in terms of cultural diversity you know geographical diversity industry diversity are you in a rare or underrepresented industry that they're interested in having and all and and functionally are you doing something that they are have demonstrated they have an interest in having someone who does what you do um and how many other people are there now who are doing what you're doing functionally. So look at the data. So look at the admitted students criteria, sorry, admitted students profiles. These are, when, when they take a new class, they crunch all the numbers and they publish transparently. Again, I like the fact that they do this. They'll tell you who's in our current incoming class. And also the Career Service Center will tell you who's in the, who's who just graduated and that's also fun to do which is to analyze who who people are when they're coming in what's the industry mix um and and other you know f mix like salary for example incoming salary versus outgoing salary that's one of the criteria that some of the rankings look at is sort of what's the bump you're going to get what's the immediate return on investment of paying for these very expensive programs and quitting your job and doing all the other stuff all right so this is getting a little long and rambly all i wanted to say was Join me. Um, I'm going to be making a series of videos. Please subscribe to my channel. You'll be the first to know when I've made a new video. I love making these videos every chance I get. I'll be doing a series of videos looking at the stated admissions criteria of Harvard Business School, HBS, and Stanford GSB. What are the admissions criteria? And then also what are the date? What's the data say for the uh, incoming class? And maybe also I'll look at the outgoing class uh, just in terms of the career change aspects in terms of helping. And this is something you can do right now. Um, for Harvard and Stanford, the admissions criteria are online. Not all schools are online. For example, I can't find Wharton's stated admissions criteria. I'm going to be asking them when I see them at the AGAT conference, and you can email them in the meantime. Hey, hey, Wharton, I can't find your admissions criteria. I have an old version, but I want to find the new version. I don't, I don't readily see it, and my colleague also has checked. We can't find it on their website. It doesn't mean anything particularly, except they're not being as transparent as I think they could be, which is to say st specifically in terms of qualities or qualifications of what exactly they're looking for from the applicant class, because you can see the fact of who they actually take, but I want to also see before that what sort of, you can also look at the school's mission statement. Wharton has a really cool mission. Um, you can find that on their website. What's the mission of the school? What are the stated in, uh, uh, admissions criteria, what do they say they're looking for, and then on that flip side, who do they actually take in this most, re most recent class. And also, you can really geek out on this, and you can you can compare, as Poets and Quants sometimes does, the uh, admitted st uh, student profiles across a, a three years, for example, both you know three years of people coming in and also three years of people going out. All right, that's it for now. Subscribe. You'll know when I made a new one. That's it for now. Best of luck with school research. Um, uh, and everything you're working on in your life. All right, bye for now.